Hello, welcome to my channel. This video is part of the playlist on muscular diseases and this time I will speak about an acquired myopathy called clostridial myonecrosis. This myopathy is due to an infection with different types of clostridia. The most common is clostridium perfringens, but there are also other clostridia. They are all anaerobic bacteria and they produce toxins that damage tissues. But where are these bacteria from? Well, clostridia can even be already present in the muscles as spores and become activated by puncture wounds or other trauma. One of the most frequent causes of this myopathy are intramuscular injections, especially with irritant products such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Initially, there is a small reaction on the site of injection or of the trauma, but in approximately 48 hours, there is emphysema formation, that is a swelling with crackles or crepitus on palpation. Furthermore, the animal shows fever, tachycardia and tachymnia. These infections diffuse very quickly into muscle fascia, thus in few hours they can arrive in different areas of the body, causing toxemia, multi-organ failure, coma and death in 12-24 hours. How to reach the diagnosis? Well, clinical signs are quite characteristic. I saw a few cases and really they are difficult to forget. In few hours the horse swells like an elephant. In the description of this video I will leave you the link to the University of Minnesota where you can find the document on clostridial myonecrosis written by Stephanie Wahlberg and there you can find also some pictures to have an idea of the disease. On blood analysis you will find hemoconcentration and the stress leucogram. Muscular enzymes may be increased but as the disease is really acute the values may not correspond to the real extension of the muscle damage. As it happens also in other myopathies, there is release of myoglobin and thus there can be pigmenturia. If we perform a fasciotomy, we can detect gram-positive bacilli in the smear of the fluid obtained from the muscles. This fluid can also be used for culture to isolate the bacteria involved. Treatment should start as soon as possible and it's based on antimicrobials, high dose penicillin and metronidazole, analgesia with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory and opioids, and fluid therapy for vascular support. The fasciotomy consists in the creation of fenestration in the muscle fascia to allow oxygen to reach the tissues. Prognosis is guarded and mortality is high even with aggressive treatment. Okay, that's all. We will see another disease in the next video. Bye!